once, when I was an assistant principal, I got banned from the county. I mean the whole county. Or maybe it was just the schools. See, I had just handed in my resignation because I got a new job. To my surprise, they wouldn't accept it. They told me, we don't take resignations after July 15th. But I have another job. I'm not going to be here in August. Well, then we're going to hold your certificate. Well, that's fine. I have several. And I'm going to another state. That's fine. And then I heard it. You're banned. You're banned from this county. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. I am going to need some clarification. Number one, can you do that? Number two, am I really banned from the whole county, or is it just the county schools? And for some reason, the conversation ended right there. Now, not every conversation ended that way, thank goodness. Let me take you back to when I first started teaching. I had just finished up my teacher training for the upcoming school year, and everyone kept telling me, you better make sure your rules and your expectations are established on day one. Or those students, they're going to own you. They're going to eat you alive. Now, I'd like to inform you, to my knowledge, after 20 years of teaching and coaching and another 15 as administrator, no teacher has been eaten alive. That first day, and <laughs> if I'm truthful, that whole week was a complete blur. I was solving more problems than I was actually teaching. The students' energy was way down, and they didn't appear to be learning anything. I was getting frustrated. Everyone just kept focusing on rules and expectations. I just wanted to teach. One thing was clear. It was very important to establish a good classroom culture. Luckily, it was a short week. I felt I needed a restart. I got to thinking back when I first told my grandfather, who was my pap, that I was going to start teaching. He said to me, well, what is it you're going to want from these students? I said, I want them to learn. And he said to me, that's funny. I think I've heard that before. Now I was confused. But yet I was curious. See, over the years, I would take every opportunity to spend time with my pap in his shop. I can remember him saying, let's get to this. We might learn something. And pap had that knack, you know, that way of getting his point across. Hey, Jim. What? You know what it is you don't know? No, Pap. What is it I don't know? And I started to remember. I recall a time earlier when I spent an entire week with him. Communication is what's important, is what he told me. Don't just listen to respond. Listen to understand. Sometimes you just need to listen up before you speak up. Do what's right. Have ethics. That'll make, you'll make better decisions that way, he said. What do you stand for? That's what people are going to remember. Value your ethics. Do the right thing. Add value. Attitude. <laughs> Pap was really quick to remind me that I was in charge of my attitude. Not him, not anybody else. Pap would always say to me, not everything's going to go your way, so you better have a positive attitude. That positive attitude is going to make the rough times smoother and the good times sweeter. I like the way you treat people, he often said to me. Pap was always letting me know that when you have relationships, there needs to be respect, which needs to go both ways. Treat people the way they want to be treated was his motto. But there was something Pap was really clear on, and that was no. No excuses, own it and solve it. Pap would always tell me, just because you get a no, 
doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you can't do it right now. However, you need to find out why you got no and solve it. You know, it's interesting, 45 to 55% of the time we communicate, we're listening. And 85% of what we learn is through us listening. Learning is connected to listening for sure. I had an idea, an idea for my restart. I wrote it down. Listen, ethics, attitude, respect, no. That was going to be it. The next day, I put it up on the wall. In every class, I let them know this was a restart. We were going to start to pay attention to what we needed to do every day, and that was learn. We're going to listen up before we speak up. We're going to have ethics, do the right thing, and we're going to add value. Or oh, we're going to have an attitude, but it's going to be positive. We're going to respect everyone and everything at all times. And we're going to understand no. No excuses. We're going to own it. We're going to solve it. You know, that connected. It resonated. There was a transformation. And soon I realized this was going to go way beyond the classroom. Because we improved our communication through true listening. We had good values and ethics. We had a positive attitude. We built relationships on respect, and we understood no. We took responsibility. We owned it. We solved it. You know, as a speaker, a coach, an educator, that learn has been at the core of every classroom, team, and school and relationship I've been associated with. I have spent the last 35 years spreading the lesson that is found in LEARN. It's a simple yet profound idea that sparks transformation. It truly went from the walls to the halls and beyond. Communication, true communication, is understanding what is said. I want to challenge you. I want you to disconnect from all the noise and all the distractions. What if you lean in and you learn? What part of learn can you improve? If you're going to learn, it starts with listening. Let's listen to learn.